بحرين أمنا ولجلها نرخص دمانا بحرين قسم بالخلقنا يا امنا نفدا لو ننسى والله I never imagined I'd find myself in the middle of a breaking news story but that's exactly what happened in February 2011 I was living as an expat in the small Gulf island of Bahrain and got to speak to those risking their lives protesting for freedom The riot police came with no warning. Tear gas and rubber bullets fired into a crowd that had been pledging peaceful protest. Hundreds of people, among them women and children, had been sleeping at the Pearl Roundabout, determined not to surrender the place that had become the focus of their protests. Now they were being forced to run for their lives. Soon reports came of fresh deaths in this latest crackdown. Can I ask you about why you're here and what you would like to see change in Bahrain? Yeah, I want to change uh, all things in Bahrain. Uh, uh, all family of Al Khalifa. All uh, family, okay. Al Khalifa family, we need them to go out, all of yeah. them, because they are, they kill my people. Mm -hmm. There is no freedom, no democracies. My name is Miranda Diable, and my expert housewife status meant that I was able to visit the protest site and talk to Bahrainis while international journalists were stranded at the airport, denied a chance to speak to the people affected by the brutal crackdown that was taking place on this tiny island in the Gulf. It had been rumoured for a while that there would be mass protests against the Al Khalifa government, inspired by the revolutionary protests in the Arab world. It was no news to me that the majority of the Bahrain population wanted greater political freedom and a fairer stake in society. Small protests had been taking place almost weekly since we arrived there in 2007, but this was going to be the big push. What I didn't expect was the government's violent response to these protests. A standoff between people and government intensified in only a matter of days. This continues to this day, despite what you may not see and hear through the media. Like Egyptians in Tahrir Square, the Bahraini sought a gathering space to hold these protests and it was to be the country's largest road intersection, the Pearl Roundabout, or Lulu, as it is known in Arabic. When I arrived there on the 20th of February, the protest camp had already been attacked three days earlier, security forces killing four protesters and injuring around 300, including women, children and the elderly. The next morning, around 50,000 people took to the streets for the funerals of the dead. When some tried to return to the roundabout later that afternoon, they were shot at by the police, and one man was fatally wounded. With the situation escalating, the more liberal wing of the regime, the Crown Prince Salman al Khalifa, ordered the troops to withdraw from the roundabout. Immediately, it was flocked with thousands of jubilant returning protesters. The Pearl Roundabout, the place that's become a symbol of protest in Bahrain, back in the hands of thousands of people. This had for a time become a closed military zone, the place where soldiers had fired live rounds, rubber bullets and tear gas at protesters. The next day, feeling sure that the troops would not return, I ventured out with my microphone. People were keen to talk to me. And this man was one of them. We are here just to demand a constitutional uh, kingdom as it was uh, agreed and approved by all the nation in 2001. Unfortunately, the king just denied all the promises he gave to, to his people. And just uh, over the last 10 years, he used the iron hand just to crack down all any uh, peaceful demonstration and... Uh, so this is why people are now reached to, to, the, to a dead end and this is why they are here. They won't leave here until they actually get all the 
demands. Are the demands the same as before the killings happened? No, 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 no. It is more extreme than what they actually asked for in the beginning was just to reform and just to uh, negotiate with the uh, regime to introduce real reforms. But unfortunately, after the massacre happened on, on Thursday, people, they, nobody, even even the, uh, the rational people now have no place. They didn't leave any uh, small room for, for these rational people to calm down these uh, protesters. <laughs> Down, down, Hamad. I don't want all family of all of Khalifa. They kill the people. They uh, they sleep in the night mm. at uh, three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. They kill him. During my final days in Bahrain, I began to realise that many of my expat friends did not share my sympathy for the protesters. They felt threatened by any possible revolution and believed the end of the Al Khalifa regime would mean an end to the comfortable lifestyles we were all enjoying. Some declared their loyalty through Facebook, and one of the most vocal was Betsy, a British woman who had lived on the island for 30 years and was now a naturalised Bahraini. She could see no wrongdoing on the part of the ruling family. People come here to work from all over the world. They come for a two-year contract, and 20 years later, they're still here. Or, as in my case, 30 years later, I'm still in Bahrain, and I'm a Bahraini now. What you have to remember is, Bahrain might be a small kingdom, but it's got a huge heart. So, the world out there, watch this space. Bahrain will be in your vision from now on for all the right reasons. I love you, Bahrain. I love King Hamid. I love our Crown Prince. I love our Prime Minister. I love my fellow Bahrainis, regardless of their origins. Because I know that the one thing that, that, that doesn't work is hate. And the one thing that does work is love. Of course, Betsy believed that such a Bahrain was already here, and for the privileged, it is. However, for many, it is still a dream, a long fight away, a victory that was almost theirs in spring 2011. Her lived experience of Bahrain is not too far removed from the Bahrain described to me by this 11-year-old boy. What would you like to see for the future? What <laughs> انت كطفل شنو تحب تشوف المستقبل انا اكون محل لي يعني نطلع من الجامعه ان سيدي يعني حاس شغل ما تعطل هي وان تو ليف ان بيس هي وان تو سبورت اول ذا فاميليز سو هيز ذا فيوتشر ان ذا فيوتشر وين هي فينيش هيز ايديوكيشن ذير از نو نو ديفرشيت بين شيا اور سني all they live in one country, they all get the same chance and everywhere, in the ministries and bigger companies, uh, the fair uh, government. For my people, let's put our hands together, cause we gon' move on together. I wanna know, now if you really love Bahrain. A month later, we left Bahrain. We could not look the other way anymore. People critical of the regime were being arrested in 3am house raids, some of whom we knew personally. 18 months on, as I speak, it appears that Bahrainis will not be giving up their struggle anytime soon. Mm -hmm.